Hello, my name is Sandwich, and I work in Antarctica. And to give you an idea, um, to do this in, whoa, it's on its own. Wait, oh my god, Okay, so um, I work in Antarctica. I've worked in Antarctica for five seasons over the last four years. And to give you an idea, it is a continent. It is huge. It is bigger than America. Um, <laughs> bigger than America. And uh, um, the U.S. Antarctic program operates three stations in Antarctica, um, Palmer, South Pole, and McMurdo. I've worked in McMurdo and a little bit in South Pole, and both of those are accessed through Christchurch, New Zealand. Um, Palmer Station, if you can imagine the bottom ass of the globe, Palmer Station is close to Tierra del Fuego in South America. And from Christchurch, New Zealand to McMurdo is about a five and a half hour flight due south. South Pole is about three and a half hours from McMurdo. And to kind of give you another idea, McMurdo Station is actually located on an island, kind of like an almond in a chocolate bar. Um, <laughs> on this side, I don't know how to show it to you, maybe with a pointer here. On this side is permanent ice shelf. It's about 200 feet thick. And th th on this side is um, it's called sea ice, and it's anywhere between 7 and 14 feet thick. And I think it only needs to be 14 fi feet thick to land our cargo planes. Oh, wow. So um, from a view from a, the Ob Hill on the side of town, that's our station. It's kind of like a college campus. There's a little under 100 buildings. And it's obviously there to support science, glaciology, uh, global warming, biology, penguins, fish, everything you can think of that would have to do with that part of the world. Um, all of the, the buildings you see here are for logistics, construction, maintenance, science, laboratories, and dormitories. And that's a C-17 in the background. That's the cargo Air Force cargo plane that we arrive on. And I think it holds about 150 passengers. In front is a skua, which is our local trash bird. It's a scavenger. It's rather annoying. It's kind of a little view from the inside of the C-17. And have faith in science. Yes, science is what we're really there to do. However, um, I am in charge of logistics. Um, well, not in charge of all of logistics, but I, I manage a few warehouses. I drive heavy equipment. I count toilet paper. I refill propane. I'm the girl to go to if you need oxygen bottles, acetylene, or um, number two pencils. So this is <laughs> this is MapCon. It's a DOS-based. Oh yes, <laughs> surgical gloves, medical supplies. It's all here. Uh, MapCon 96 is a uh, DOS-based uh, program. It's really antiquated, and obviously, it really hasn't been updated much since 96. It really sucks. Um, and that's me in my forklift, uh, forking about a couple hundred pounds of acetylene. Um, and there's my other loader. That's an IT26 front loader. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's Laura Lee. Um, and there's me refilling propane. Um, in the world's southernmost propane doer. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we have a variety of uh, up to date technology, as you can see here. <laughs> this is how we um, conduct studies on cosmic rays. That's done to the scientists. Like I said, I just count toilet paper. And there's divers that do marine biology in dry suits. They go under the ice. Um, you could see more in Werner Herzog's film called Encounters at the End of the World. Oh, uh, that was called a piston bully. Oh, okay, that's a piston bully. Anyway, uh, this is um, one of the historic huts that the um, Antarctic explorers uh, used in the early 1900s. From this is at a place called Cape Evans. It's about 14 miles from McMurdo Station, and I am a uh, I am an official tour guide for these historic huts. In the back is Mount Erebus. It's the world's southernmost uh, active volcano. We do get tourists from time to time um, when the ships allow, but mostly it's for the people who work on station because we never get to leave town. So to go 14 miles away is like the biggest trip you'll get all year. Just so you know, we're locked on campus and there's nowhere to go. So this is some of the stuff you'll find inside. Oh my God, I have 30 seconds left, so there's really not a whole lot more to do. <laughs> I have five years to talk about, but some of the stuff that the um, explorers used to eat, lunch, tongue, kippered herrings and such. And that's what we eat today. Um, if it's not frozen or dried, then you're lucky. And um, I was one of the people who started Santarctica at the McMurdo. I had a, 
30 Santa suits and 30 elf suits, um, courtesy of the Cacophony Society. And that's about all the time I have. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> My name is Sandwich and I'm unemployed, so I'm available for talks and jobs. Thanks. Was there, was there a military presence there? There was. In the I, I see a military presence in every Antarctica base. No, there originally was a military uh, presence in the 1950s is how it began through Operation Deep Freeze. Um, McMurdo Station was established in 1955-56, and they started actually the seven cities of Antarctica. Um, and now there's only three stations, but now it's completely run by the National Science Foundation. And um, we're only supported by logistics uh, through the military with the Air Force, Air National Guard, and the Navy Cargo Handling Battalion. Oh, are you talking about like the thing? Yeah, if only the helicopter pilot could save the station from doom. <laughs> Oh, the summer population is 1,100, and the winter population is about 119. And I didn't get to show you my winter slides, but I did spend the winter there in 2007. It's a long, dark winter. Okay, bye. <laughs>